Republican Eric Kavdi officially enters Wisconsin Senate race against longtime incumbent Tammy Baldwin. What is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American, back again with a new video and today. It is time that we talk about the 2024 Wisconsin Senate race because everyone, after months of waiting, we finally have an official challenger to Tammy Baldwin. Now, before we continue with today's video, I hope you guys do enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the social media accounts in the description down below, and of course, join the channel today. Again, folks, all support's greatly appreciated, but uh, yeah, let's get right into it. It is more than likely that Eric Hovde is going to be the candidate against Tammy Baldwin. I mean, you could have someone like Scott Mayer or hell, even David Clark run, but it seems like that the GOP is getting behind Eric Hovde right off the bat. Wisconsin businessman Eric Hovde officially launched his Senate campaign Tuesday, finally giving Republicans a challenger against Senator Tammy Baldwin in a crucial battleground race that could determine control of the chamber. Now, I, I highly doubt that Wisconsin will be the state that determines who controls the Senate. Just for the simple fact that while Wisconsin is a 50-50 state, one, Tammy Baldwin is an extremely strong candidate. I think she's overrated, but she is going to be a tough nut to crack. But number two, you got states like Montana, Ohio, that are very Republican, that currently have Democrat senators, and Republicans only need two Senate seats to flip the chamber. So... I highly doubt that Wisconsin will be the state that determines who controls the Senate. His announcement, made in a 30-second video, ends months of speculation over who the GOP would pit against Baldwin, a strong and well-funded incumbent. And this 30-second video wasn't that good. Listen, I support Hovde because he probably is our best candidate, but just watch this. Do you feel like America is slipping away? Our country is facing enormous challenges. Our economy, our health care, crime, and open borders. Everything is going in the wrong direction. All Washington does is divide us and talk about who's to blame. And nothing gets done. That's not the country I know and love. I'm Eric Hovde. I'm running for the U.S. Senate. And I approve this message because I believe we need to come together and find common sense solutions to restore America. I have two major problems with the video. The first one is, it doesn't say Wisconsin once. I mean, dude, you're running in the state of Wisconsin. You're not running in Montana, Wyoming, wherever. You're running in Wisconsin. Make that clear. But number two, and I think this is actually a bigger problem, it seemed like the video was put together at the last second. I mean, no graphics, no background music, nothing. It's just him walking down the street and that's it. Listen, I'm not saying you need to have a 20-minute documentary, but dude, it just seemed like there was no effort put into it. Our country is facing enormous challenges. Our economy, our healthcare, crime, and open borders. Everything is going in the wrong direction, Hovde said in the video. Hovde then introduced himself and saying, I'm running for the U.S. Senate. I mean, he talked about the right issues. I mean... Even healthcare, I never heard a Republican talk about that, but outside of this part where he talked about the issues, there was nothing here. It was just generic guy walking down the street and calling it a day. In a speech later Tuesday, Hovde further honed on that message, slamming President Biden and Democrats for their record on those issues, as well as the administration's messy withdrawal from Afghanistan in 2021. I mean, dude... Afghanistan, what happened there was awful, but let's face it, we are in 2024. That happened three years ago, and people just aren't talking about it anymore. It sucks, but it's the case. I will not focus on the withdrawal. He said he was running because I love my country, and everywhere I look today, in my country, I see it failing. Sometimes I don't recognize what's happening, said Hovde, speaking from a building in Madison that his family's real estate company developed. Hovde, a multimillionaire whose business empire includes a Madison-based real estate company, as well as several banking companies on the West Coast, is expected to be able to partly self-fund his campaign. Having run for office previously, he also has the benefit of some name recognition among voters, though a Marquette University Law School poll last month found that more than 8 in 10 registered voters in the state 
didn't know enough about Hovde to form an opinion about him. Which makes sense, because the last time he ran was back in 2012, so he's going to have some name recognition, but when you haven't run for office in 12 years, and let's face it, you're not known at all already, yeah, you're not going to have the name ID you would think you would have. But while Republicans view Wisconsin as being the, among the party's top pickup opportunities this fall, defeating Baldwin, a two-term senator and a prolific fundraiser, will not be easy. Even in a presidential year with a vulnerable incumbent Democrat at the top of the ticket, I think this is delusional that they're focusing on Wisconsin. I hate to say it because, of course, it is my state. But Baldwin more than likely isn't going down. Eric Hovde, you know... I don't know enough about the guy to say, does he have a chance, does he not? I honestly don't know, but the only way you're beating Baldwin is if Trump wins the state by three to four. That That's the bare minimum. I mean, you're not going to win the state if you win by one point, because Baldwin will outrun Biden by a few points. For whatever reason, there are a lot of Trump voters in western Wisconsin, in particular, that love Baldwin. That's in large part due to the fact that state and national Democrats haven't expected Hovde's entrance in the race for several months following the decision by two prominent Republicans, a.k.a. Mike Gallagher and Tom Tiffany, have been steadily attacking the newly minted candidate for living out of state for several years and for his leadership of banks worth billions of dollars. And this here is going to be the biggest line of attack. Nothing on policy, just about the fact, hey... Hovde lived in California for a year or whatever, which I always hate those attacks. Listen, Hovde grew up in Wisconsin. He has a long lineage in the state, wasting no time in continuing that strategy. The Wisconsin Democratic Party criticized Hovde within moments of his launch, dubbing him as California Hovde because he owns a $7 million property in Laguana Beach and has lived in the state on and off since 2012. California bank owner Eric Hovde is running for Senate to impose his self-serving agenda, putting ultra-rich people like himself ahead of middle-class Wisconsinites. Democratic Party of Wisconsin Rapid Response Director Eric Wolf said in a statement, California Hovde's self-serving agenda and attacks Wisconsinites' freedoms are exactly why Wisconsinites will reject them and send them back to a $7 million California mansion. This is a good attack on de for Democrats. I mean, this is going to be a problem. I don't get why Republicans keep running someone like Hovde. Again, nothing against the guy. I don't know enough about him. But why do you keep running people that live out of state, even if it's for like a day or something, especially in California, when he's already involved with banks? That's not a good combination, especially in Wisconsin. I mean, this is the Midwest. This is part of the country that they don't trust the coastal elites. And you have someone that lives in California? Uh, yeah. That may not be good. Baldwin's allies have also spent the past several months highlighting the fact that Hovde was in 2018 named as one of Orange County's most influential people, which is in California. Why did Republicans recruit this guy? I don't know how Hovde is on the issues. I don't know. But these are some bad attacks. I mean... These attacks will sink Hovde. It's one thing to say, okay, he lived in the California on and off during the winter or something. Fine. But he was named one of the most influential people in Orange County, California. That doesn't sound like someone that's living there just for two to three months. Hovde's allies also came out swinging against Baldwin. The National Republican Senatorial Committee, the Senate GOP's official campaign arm, had signaled as early as December that the group would support a Hovde run, released an ad Tuesday afternoon slamming Baldwin over her statements about needing to stay home during the COVID pandemic and criticizing for not taking on special interests. Oh, good lord. You're focusing on COVID? In the year of 2024? I mean, you can attack Tammy Baldwin for so much stuff, but you focus on COVID? When it's been four years? This right here is what's wrong with the GOP. They're four years too late on the issue. I mean, really, COVID in 2024, no one cares about it. Why focus on it? Why? Tammy says one thing, does another, the ads narrator says. 
Danes, meanwhile, praised Hovde in a statement. Eric Hovde's experience as a job creator rather than a career politician makes him a strong candidate to flip Wisconsin's Senate seat this year, Danes said, which Democrats can just counter by saying, what type of jobs? For working class people or for bankers? I mean, this is awful line of messaging that the Senate GOP is pushing. Focus on anything but COVID and freaking well, Eric Hovde's a job creator. Yeah, for banks maybe, but not for the average person. I mean, this is just crazy that this is what they're focusing on. Hovde's political career in Wisconsin includes an unsuccessful Senate bid in 2012 when he lost the Republican primary to former Governor Tommy Thompson, who went on to lose the general election to Baldwin, which to this day, I still firmly believe that Thompson lost because of Hovde. Do you want to know why I think so? Because there's two main facts. One, this was a bitter primary. Eric Hovde got 31% of the vote. Mark Newman got around 23. Tommy Thompson got 34%. While Democrats, they had an uncontested primary for Tammy Baldwin. This was before she was the incumbent. So they were just like, eh, we're behind Baldwin. But number two, even the Wisconsin GOP admitted after the fact that Thompson lost, in part at least, because of the primary. They blamed the fact that, hey, he had to spend all of his money right away in the primary. But when the general election happened, his campaign was broke. Hovde's decision to run this year caps a months-long odyssey for Republicans in Wisconsin, during which several prospective candidates decided against challenging Baldwin. Mike Gallagher, once thought of as the top recruit by national Republicans, said in June he wouldn't run, and just this month said he was retired from Congress altogether. Congressman Tom Tiffany opted against a bid two months later. And yeah, Mike Gallagher was the top recruit, which I have no clue why he would get absolutely crushed. But hey, Steve Daines wanted Mike Gallagher. Hovde, however, may yet face an opponent for the GOP nomination. Scott Mayer, another Wisconsin businessman, has for months flirted with the run. Asked by NBC News on Friday if he would enter the race, Mayer wrote in a text message that he was not sure, and that he'd likely decide within one month. So despite this, despite the fact they have made the way for Eric Hovde, we may have a competitive primary. I'm getting a real bad feeling about this race because Baldwin is a tough candidate to defeat. She is. But now you have this California stuff. I mean, I had no clue about the Orange County stuff. I didn't hear about it till now. This may end a complete disaster for the GOP. And now he may have to go through a bloody primary. Potentially. It's not 100%, but it seems like there is some kind of a possibility. He has to go through a primary. But anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy, smash the like button down below. Subscribe. Share with your friends. Hit that little bell. Follow the social media accounts in the description down below. And of course, join the channel today. Thank you so much. Godspeed to all of you.